Today I have some acoustic blues for you. It's a solo acoustic blues piece and not in the style of anyone in particular. It's just a nice self-contained piece. And I always think it's quite a good idea to have a handful of these kind of pieces where you can just grab an acoustic guitar and play something without the need for a band or accompaniment or a backing track or any of that kind of thing. I've tried to make this reasonably approachable. I think the first half of the piece is quite straightforward. The difficulty level ramps up a little bit in the second half of the piece. And if you're a more advanced player, you might just want to skim through it and grab the ideas that you like and improvise with it and make it your own. So before we go any further, let's take a listen to the piece. Let me take you through this piece in a reasonable amount of detail, but I'm conscious I don't want to bore people rigid by describing every last note here. And it's going to help if you've got at least a little bit of finger style experience, just know the basics and have got a bit of thumb and finger independence, I think. And if I go too fast for you, you can always rewatch the video. You can slow it down with the slow down function within YouTube, or there's always going to be a tab up on my Patreon page, which you'll be able to download and print off if you think that would be helpful. So let's get stuck into the piece then. It's a 12 bar blues, key of E, and for the most part the thumb is playing in a kind of steady bass note style, and it's mostly playing swung eighth notes, a kind of shuffle. So on the one chord of the blues in E, which is an E chord or an E7, the thumb is just going to be going, kind of bouncing on the low E in that shuffle kind of feel, uh, usually using a little bit of palm muting on the bass notes in this piece I think, just to keep the boominess of the bass strings under control. And then for the four chord you're moving across to the A string, and then the five chord is going to be B, so the thumb is going to be playing a B note either here or you could play same note up here at the seventh fret on the low E string. So let's kick off with the first phrase of the piece then. It sounds like this. We've got so you can hear that throughout all of that the thumb is just playing this steady shuffle bass pattern and then the fingers are playing this idea. We've got a combination of double and triple stops I think. So we're firstly sliding into this little shape here. It's a B and a D note. And I've got a reverse slide on the G string down to an A, pulling off to the open string and then an E. So and then I'm playing an A chord which is the second fret on the D, G and B and then the same strings open I'm just hammering down my first finger uh, onto the, the first fret on, on the G string to create an E chord sound. So if I put that together with the thumb, this is what it sounds like. We've got... Again... One... So that's the opening phrase. Play that twice and there's just a, a little connecting run on the D string after the, I play it through the first time. So just open one, two on the D, we 
play the same riff. And we're heading to the four chord and I've just got a little connecting bass line here. So it's G, G sharp and going to the four chord I'm playing an A7 here. So a bar at the second fret and then I'm playing this G note on the, on the top string. And once again, we've got the shuffle in the bass. And you can vary the rhythm of the fingers a little bit. You can go with the thumb. Or you can play the shuffle with the thumb and play triplets with the fingers. Or, or a combination of both of those things. The, the exact thing I'm playing in the piece is this. It's one, two, three, four. And in fact, in the, the second bar of that, I'm just lifting up my third finger, I think, and playing this. So if you lift up that G note, you've got a kind of A6 sound. You can play those uh, chord notes with one finger per string if you like. You could brush with your first finger. I think that sounds quite nice too. So it sounds a little bit messier, which I, I quite like. You don't want to be too precise with a piece like this necessarily. Um, then we've got another pair of connecting notes, just a G and an E. We're back to the one chord. same riff and then we're heading to the five chord with this little riff so a kind of blues scale idea hammer on and then a walk up to the root of the five chord the B7 Just holding down a, an open position B7 chord. You don't need to bother with the, the high E string there because I'm not playing that uh, string at all. And then I'm walking up to, it's really an inversion of the four chord. So we're heading to the four chord, which is an A, but I've got the third in the bass, which is a, a C sharp here. That's the chord shape. I'm just lifting up that bar of with my first finger to allow the open G and B to ring through there as well. Back home to the one chord and I've got a turnaround lick here. And this is kind of a contrary motion turnaround, I suppose. My thumb is playing a D, C sharp, C. B and then on top I've got it's G sharp A A sharp B so both of those notes are going both of the, the, the parts there are going in the opposite direction so contrary motion and then I'm just playing around a B7 chord there to take it back round to the top for the second chorus so slow run through of the first 12 bars then is two, three, four. Into the second chorus then and we're kicking off with this idea so we've got double stops on the highest two strings the thumb once again is just playing that shuffle 
pattern we're playing triplets with double stops here so I've got 12 and 10 on the B and high E strings playing triplets move that up to frets back down again and then I've got this so it's a seventh fret on the E and eight on the B giving that a little bit of a bend and I'm playing an E note here, ninth fret on the G string. So okay, you've got the choice of playing this with two fingers or just brushing with your first finger. I think both, both of those uh, sound different, but they both work well. And put that together with the thumb and you've got this kind of That might take a little bit of practice to start with just to make sure that the thumb and the fingers remain independent you want the fingers to be doing triplets the thumb to be doing the shuffle the tendency is for the thumb to to start doing triplets as well so just take that slowly and make sure that everything is synchronized and coordinated continuing with the piece we just got a little little fill there five six seven on the a string and then we repeat that phrase really um, We've got a little fill. So it's, it's 14 on the B, 15 on the high E, down to the 12th fret on both those two strings. So coming down the, the E blues scale here, to end up on this C sharp, which is the third of the four chord, we're now on the A7 chord again, and I'm doing this. just using this little three note shape it's like an open d7 shape moved higher up the neck we've got moving that one fret lower and then back up again little couple of connecting bass notes at g and e we've had that before back to the one chord starts off in the same way as the main riff then we're moving that shape up higher And we've got another little single note fill. So this is kind of an E minor pentatonic E blues scale idea. It's a little double stop, eight on the B, seven on the E, and then down the pentatonic scale. So sliding down, and then walking up to the root of the five chord. So five, six, seven, on the low E string, falling into a, a B7 bar chord, down two frets to the A7, the four chord, just moving my little finger around there, so A7 to A6, or A13, more bass notes, hit the low E and then we've got the final little turnaround or ending lick. So it's just moving an E7 shape higher up the neck. And then the ending here is, uh, again, it's just a little seventh chord shape. So it's um, seventh fret on the A, six on the D, seven on the G. That's an E7 chord. I'm just approaching that by one fret below hit the low E string to finish. Slow playthrough of the second chorus then, two, three, four.
let me take you through the gear that I'm using today. The guitar is a Martin 0015M. It's a mahogany, all mahogany guitar. And I'm actually lucky enough to have two Martins. I've got a bigger bodied Dreadnought style Martin as well, which is a great guitar. But this one is actually my favorite for finger style. It just seems to have a nice balanced sound. And I like the small body size as well. It's nice and comfortable for me to just pick up and play. For those of you who are interested in the recording side of things, I was recording this guitar today with two microphones, a pair of Neumann KM184s, which are small diaphragm condenser mics, and lots of different ways you can record acoustic guitars. I don't always do it this way, but um, I like the KM184s. They sound good, and also for video purposes, they're not too obtrusive on camera, so that's one of the reasons why I use those mics. And as far as positioning of those mics, go uh, I had one over here and one over here I didn't spend ages messing around with mic positioning but the basic idea is the one over here is pointing at this spot on the guitar around about where the neck joins the body and then the other mic was pointing towards this end of the guitar so roughly uh, the bridge and then you blend those two mics together pan them a little bit in stereo and you just get a nice accurate picture of how the guitar sounds in the room then once the recording was inside the computer, I mixed it with the help of a few plugins. I didn't use any EQ, I don't think. I used a little bit of compression from a UAD Fairchild emulation and a little bit of room reverb from a Valhalla room plugin. Well, that's it for this video. Enjoy learning to play this piece. As I said, full music and tab is going to be up on my Patreon page. And there's in fact quite a big library of various different tabs and backing tracks up there now, including quite a lot of other acoustic and fingerstyle things. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye bye.